Welcome to the Tokyo Disney Sea Food and Wine Festival. This is a thing. Did I lose my guides already? No, here they are. I thought I dropped them. My pockets are deep, though. Tokyo Disney Sea Food and Wine Festival this is the first year ever I'm going to be taking you around. I assume most of you won't be able to come and experience this, so you'll live vicariously through our review. And I'm very happy to be one of the first people on Earth to do uh, all three of the Disney Food and Wine Festivals around the world. I'm sure there's other guests here who have done them already. So... Uh, but uh, this will be going April 1st or June 30th. It's pretty long uh, for a first time out. So, I mean, the lines are already long. It took me a while to get the first item, which um, is that uh, all the booths are centralized around the American waterfront, the New York section. Um, so they're all right here, nine booths. But there's also a couple of restaurants doing things. I don't know if we're going to do the sit-down restaurants, but we're at least going to do um, all of these booths. And Teddy Roosevelt Lounge, which is in uh, the big ship, the SS Columbia, which... Uh, I have an 11 o'clock reservation for it, but we're gonna start eating. Apologies for the camera angle, the tables are incredibly low. I'd have to like, I'd have to come down here to fix that. I guess I could, I could crouch and eat. Let me get out my napkins and my fork here. So Barnacle Bills, I'm starting with absolutely the grossest item first, which is they have the infamous bone sausage. So for those of you who don't know what this is, it's a sausage which they decide to put on a bone for some reason. In case you don't know, the sausage on an animal does not come off the bone, it's, it's manufactured. So why someone in this country decided to put the sausage on the bone, I could not tell you. Um, but the two items they have at Barnacle Bills are, a, and this is gonna represent, each, each booth represents a section of the park, a port. Um, they're not called lands in this park, they're called ports at Disney, see? Uh, I love that. That is a fake boat creaking. That's coming from a speaker. Um, this might be the only food and wine festival where I stop to admire the theming of the park. <laughs> anyway, um, there is a Heartland beer cocktail, which says it's Limon in flavor for 800 yen, and a Polpetti and bone sausage uh, for 800 yen, which is meatballs and tomato stew and bone-in sausage sprinkled with cheese. Mmm. Yum. I guess let's eat first. I'm not doing conversions because by the time you watch this conversion rate could be different, but um, this is relatively cheap. Relatively cheap in US dollars. There, oh no. There it is. I don't even know if it's focusing or not. I have no idea. It's actually not terrible. Don't be wrong, it's not good. It's probably better than I thought it would be. It tastes like a... Like a microwaved sausage on a bone with cheap Parmesan cheese on top. Sauce is inoffensive. I would describe it as fine. I wouldn't tell anyone to get it, but it's fine. Um... There are just globs of grated Parmesan. Like they're not, it's not even completely broken up across the dish. There's just like globs of it sitting in the bottom of this boat for some reason. Let's, I'm gonna break one of those up and put it on a meatball and try a meatball. It's certainly better than the Italy booth at Epcot. But again, kind of like it would be good for if you bought it at like a 7-Eleven at a convenience store. It hits the spot, but it's not elevated anyway. It's fast food Italian that's at least edible. Um, at a 7, I'd give that a 2. But in fairness, I thought that was going to be the worst thing today, so I'm kind of shocked that it was edible. But this is a Heartland beer cocktail. I don't know what that means. I should probably look up what that means. So the Heartland beer is made by Kirin, which Japanese brewing company, the most ubiquitous, I would say. Kirin Heartland made is, is only made from water, malt, and hops. Um, it's a pretty simple beer. And this is a cocktail, so they're adding some limone component to make this that 
Is this just a stir? Let's give it a stir, I guess. I almost want to say they're putting like a wine in there. It's got the sweetness of like a Prosecco um, with a lemon, like a lemon lime flavor in a beer. It's actually not bad. It's kind of, it makes it the beer light and refreshing. Although I've never had the Heartland beer, so maybe it's light and refreshing to begin with. Yeah, refreshing beer cocktail. Sorry, I don't want to, the wind is bad today. That would have blown up into the ocean. Um, which is actually right behind that wall, the actual ocean. Um, I give the beer cocktail a three out of seven. It's perfectly fine. It's enjoyable. But certainly nothing to write home about. Um, but again, I don't expect a lot of high ratings today. My palate's going to be different. But then, then again, I mean, I've spoken to many guests that come here regularly, and they say the food doesn't necessarily match their palate either. The food leaves a lot to be desired for them, so... Um, we'll see if we find something. I'm sure there's going to be a dessert. They, they, they always kill it with the snack food. I'm sure there'll be some outrageous dessert. All right, on to our next stop. I found a, I found a post in the American Waterfront Park, like Central Park area, um, that'll work for what we're doing. It's at least a better height. Um, and you have the SS Columbia behind me, which is great. I love the Columbia. So uh, our next stop was going to be, it is going to be, uh, Liberty Landing Diner, which is just across the way over there. Uh, and this menu is inspired by Port Discovery, which is home to Nemo and Friends Sea Rider and the Aquatopia. It's sort of like a, it's the Tomorrowland of this park. It's supposed to be this outpost for scientists and, and the like to, to uh, explore the ocean. And uh, it used to be about, you know, also learning about storms, but Storm Rider is long gone now. Go look up Storm Rider, give it a watch. It's pretty interesting. So, uh, inspired somehow by that is a candy sweet potato sundae. I don't know what that has to do with the ocean or exploring it. No idea. But it's a sundae made with a variety of ingredients such as sweet, uh, candy sweet potato and daifuku. Daifuku is going to be like strawberry mochi, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. And also a sparkling wine. But this sundae is starting to not survive, so I think we should have it. I can't hold things in front of my face. It won't focus on them. Trying my best with this camera, but we have a nice shot to show you. I know someone will still complain they didn't see the food enough. Their ice cream is my favorite. It's real milk, real dairy. It's so creamy. I always love getting ice cream here. Let me get one of these Mickey, these Mickey candy sweet potatoes. Hello, pigeon. It really is like New York. So there's no way to break up a giant candy sweet potato. All they give you is a little spoon. There's no other cutlery there, so it's expected you eat that all in one bite. Um, it's it's a lot of starch. It's just real, real chalky. A hint of sweetness. I don't think all the flavors you want from a candied sweet potato, though. I'm not blown away. I'll have the other one. Let's let's double check. I don't think that adds anything. There is like a syrup on top that I think has a sweet potato flavor, but maybe I'm just getting that from the candy sweet potato. Kind of hard to tell what's going on. Also, the descriptions are kind of non-existent. That translation is all we have, and that's all that it says. So some of this is left to the imagination. So in typical fashion, there is sort of a cereal layer. Every one of their Sundays has sort of a crunchy cereal layer. This is a thing here. So I found some cereal of some kind. I think it's like a strawberry cereal, so that's where the Daifuku flavor is coming from. Just tastes like sweet strawberry cereal and ice cream, but the, I mean, it's a good combination. I like it. I don't know what's at the bottom. It looks like there's fruit at the bottom. Anchors away. Oh, that's another cereal ball. I see there's, I think there's fruit. They have the consistency of like red bean paste a bit. Maybe they are the red beans. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I'm not getting that strawberry out of them though. 
if that's what it's supposed to be. I'm not mad on it, just on the fact that I got to have ice cream at Tokyo Disney Resort, which is my favorite. So, I'm going to give that a five. It's pretty good. The sweet potato Mickeys are fine. Oh, Prometheus is erupting, so you'll hear that in the background. That's not my stomach after the bone sausage, believe it or not. Um, it's a five. It's salad. I would have it. I would give it a try. If you haven't had ice cream here on your trip, that's worth a shot. Now wash it down with sparkling wine. What kind of sparkling wine? I have no idea. It just says sparkling wine and there's no description. Look at this thick, this super thick plastic cup though. It's a very basic but drinkable sparkling wine. It's not overly, it's just sweet enough. It's, it's just right for the price and for a theme park setting. That'll do the trick. Probably not enough for any of my English speaking people watching. Uh, it's probably not a big enough serving for you, but um, I think nonetheless, if you're in the market for sparkling wine walking around Disney Sea, it'll do the trick. Perfectly, perfectly serviceable. Shall we move on? Welcome to Teddy Roosevelt Lounge, one of my favorite spaces in any uh, Disney park in the world. You could see why. I mean, that early 1900s uh, vibe is fantastic and a celebration of one of our greatest American presidents. Um, a lot of cool propping, a lot of great stuff. I, I only showed you so much. I don't want to bother people while they're dining. So I took a little bit of video um, before they sat most of the tables. So you can enjoy that. Um, pretty extensive drink menu, all your Standards are here, Moscow Mule, martinis, uh, pretty much anything you could want, except the hot butter grum, which is a story for another day. But for the food and wine festival, well, their specials always be at the front of the menu. You can get an English menu um, when you check in. Um, so the special stuff is always at the front. There's usually a non-alcoholic special drink, an alcoholic special drink, and then a dessert plate, and you get this great glass. Um, you could add on with any of the specialty drinks, the non-alcoholic. But for the Food and Wine Festival, it's a go-go no kocha, tea jelly, cream cheese whip topping, almonds, cinnamon, and coriander. I don't know what go-go no kocha is. I should probably look that up. Um, you know, as all the booths out there are celebrating individual ports of Disney Sea, I don't, this one isn't labeled as one particular port. Uh, let me see if our English announcement has anything about what this is exactly. Nope, just says special soft drink. So I'm going to search Gogo no Kocha. So again, from uh, one of their great sponsors, Kirin, the drink people, um, they make a uh, Gogo no Kocha milk tea. And also Gogo no Kocha, there's just a regular tea as well. So... There's a black tea. It seems to be the name of their tea line, I'm guessing. Um, so I don't know which of the teas this is. Um, it looks like it's going to be the regular tea. The Kieran Afternoon Tea is what it looks like to me. That's the color for me. It certainly doesn't look like the other ones. But let's give it a stir and let's try it. That is a thick whipped topping on top. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, the tea smell is, it's gonna be strong tea because I can smell it from here. All right, Get down in there. Maybe it is the milk tea. It's hard to tell in this lighting. No, I remember when I shot it in the light, it looked that color. Maybe with the cream, it kind of turned into a milk tea. It's a lot of coriander. Wow. This is actually amazing. I love this. Yeah, that coriander and the, and the almonds and the cinnamon. I, those are the real forward flavors, but then you get the sweetness of that cream cheese whip topping. The chunks of tea jelly, so it's gonna be like a gelatin that tastes like tea. And then obviously there's actual tea in here too. Um, so it's a, it, 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 imagine having a, like a tea with cinnamon and coriander and almonds um, with a little bit of sweetness added. It makes it taste real Christmassy. It's very cinnamon heavy. So it, it tastes like a Christmas drink, although it's, it's iced, it's cold. So it's a, it's a nice for a warm day, but. It's a really nice mix. I'm gonna give this a seven. This is perfect. Yeah. Some notes about Teddy Roosevelt Lounge if you come here, even if it's not food and wine. Um, there's gonna be two lines outside. On the left side will be reservations. At some point, we'll go through how to make reservations, not today. Um, and on the right side, um, along the interior hallway, is a walk-up. They always have a walk-up, and they'll, they'll tell you when you get in line how long the wait is. Um, but they open at 11. My suggestion is rope drop if you don't want to wait too long, especially if it's a busy day at the park. But um, whether it's a festival or not, I would absolutely come here. I think this is a must for any um, American guest, whether you drink or not, because they always have non-alcoholic stuff in there. There is some limited food options too. I don't even know what it is right now. The special dessert, the dessert plates are always beautiful and actually very good usually. Um, but right now there's an appetizer plate with, with uh, some seafood and beef. Um, there's snacks, so they have mixed nuts. They have a sandwich plate, which is shrimp and salmon trout sandwich right now. Not my thing, but then also they have anyone, any kind of coffee you could want. There's floats, there's a melon soda float, which is very good. Um, can't recommend Teddy Roosevelt Lounge enough. Okay, we're on to our next stop, ladies and gentlemen, uh, which was the Dockside Diner, which is a full-blown counter service. So some of the full-blown counter services that are indoors are taking part in this and uh, since we're it, it's a full counter service in American Waterfront uh, it's serving a menu inspired by American Waterfront this is gonna be number two on that map uh, they have a coca-cola cocktail which they're just saying is cherry brandy that's all it says uh, there's a fried chicken leg which this time around is a buffalo sauce version they do have something similar to this uh, on their regular menu it is not buffalo flavored it's just a big fried piece of chicken sometimes the quality is a little iffy if I'm being honest. And then last but not least is the assorted snacks, which is recommended for vegetarian, which is a big deal here. I mean, they're, the vegetarian meals here are relatively new the last couple of years. Um, this is kind of a big deal. Roasted falafel and soy nuggets. Uh, it did come with an unadvertised dipping sauce. Let me see what they said on the actual menu. Might have a little more of a description, honestly, than what they gave us. Don't know what the sauce is, couldn't tell you. <laughs> Gonna be a lot, of, we're doing a lot of guessing at this festival. Um, we'll talk about Fantasy Springs next. A Fantasy Springs item, dreaming of Fantasy Springs item, uh, will be part of this too, we'll, we'll get there. But let's start, let's start with the vegetarian then. So these again are uh, baked falafel and soybean nuggets. So these are the soybean nuggets, they're shaped like hearts, cute. Let me try one without the sauce. They're a little chewy. I mean, they definitely taste like soy. Um, 
they're just, it's, it's basically texture and salt is what I'm getting with like a soybean flavor, but mostly salt. Um, they do sell sauces in there. Let's try it with this one. But they do sell those spicy sauces, which I've talked about on the vlogs, the black mala and the spicy harissa, which will really take up anything a notch. You may want those. With this, those will be 110 yen each if you get them separately. Thousand Island. That helps a lot. I would love to give this a bad review, but I know how few vegetarian options are on this park, so I'm not going to. Let's try the falafel. Baked falafel. Try one plain. So I eat a lot of falafel at home. I'd say once or twice a week I have. Typically fried. Um, even for falafel, this is pretty dry. It's a good flavor, though. I assume, again, you'll want to just put it in the sauce, but then it's really just a question of do you like Thousand Island sauce? It didn't help that. For some reason, it doesn't blend well with that. I don't know why. It drowns out the flavor that it did have. So, I'm going to give this a three. Yeah, just because it's a decent option for, for vegetarian, which, again, very few options to begin with. Um, it's not vegan. It does contain egg in the batter. So, you know, vegans, you're in, if you're coming to Tokyo Disney, you're in a lot of trouble. There's very little you can eat. But on one of the vlogs, we're eventually going to cover all the vegan options. So stay tuned for that if you are coming here. Uh, fried chicken leg with buffalo sauce. There's not a whole lot more to say about it. This we're getting the fork and knife out for. I don't the breading looks more red than usual, so I don't know if it's just a dollop of sauce or if the breading's different than the usual, too. I don't know. My first cut is just breading. The breading is this thick that this is all just breading. Ooh. Oh, that is super spicy, that buffalo sauce. Real nice kick. My biggest problem with the regular one is it's a little slimy. The chicken's a little slimy. That's still here. It's not the best quality piece of chicken you're gonna have in a theme park. Um, sauce is super spicy. Really heavily breaded though. Um, but the, other than the sliminess, the taste and texture of the meat is fine. Once you get past that slimy layer that's kind of between the breading and the chicken, it's a two. It's a nice serving, though. It, it's huge. But again, if the item's not great, then, then who's that helping? All right, Coca-Cola cocktail, which is, what they say, cherry, cherry brandy? Cherry brandy Coca-Cola cocktail. So I assume it's just cherry brandy and, and Coke. These are definitely chocolate chips on the top. Let's give it a stir. It's well balanced, surprisingly. It, it's just Coke and cherry brandy, but it, it's really well balanced. It's not too much Coke to where it's too syrupy and sticky sweet. It's just enough where you get, you get just a little bit of Coke on the front end, and on the back end you get the alcohol, that cherry flavor, um, which isn't medicinal either. It, it's on the cusp, but it's not quite there. I like the texture of the chocolate chips, too. It gives it something. This is a four. Four out of seven. I would have this again. Not my cocktail of choice, but, but the cherry and the chocolate chips and the Coke, it, it gives you this very chocolatey, like, I don't know, like a, a dark chocolate candy bar kind of flavor palette going on. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about real quick uh, is something else I was able to buy here you can pick up at several locations. 
Um, if you're going to enjoy the Food and Wine Festival here at Disney Sea, they have something called. I'm going to find it here. It is called the uh, Seasonal Gourmet Ticket Set. And the Seasonal Gourmet Ticket Set uh, comes with a set of three food and drink tickets and a souvenir lunch box, complete with a drink holder. The set can be purchased from Dockside Diner, but also Gondolier Snack, uh, New York Deli, Hudson River Harvest, and the food truck, the blue food truck, which is right to the side of me here in Waterfront Park. Um, so what you get here is... Again, like, um, D I know DCA does the, the, like, sip and saver pass, right? We don't do that anymore in Florida, but... So you get some little tickets to use at the booths and restaurants. Uh, and then also this, this really cool carrying tray, which I'm going to, in a separate video you're going to watch now, I'm going to open up and fold it out and show you how to use it. saw I assembled that in all of two seconds so it's you just pop the sides into these you seal them up and then you have this drink holder which is two different sizes actually there's um, I guess they factored in there's two different size cups um, um, I assume that's those are the soft drink cup sizes so that's the small and that's the medium nothing goes above a medium here um, it's cute art on it too Might be of art for the U.S. parks for sure. Oh, that yeah, wind blew the train. Uh, and then you have a lid. Let's go Tokyo Disney Road where the fun's at. I agree. It is where the fun's at. And that'll go right over the top. So if it is just food and not a drink, you can put the lid on and carry it around, which is great. You can use it as a lunchbox too, really. And then you can fold it back down. Uh, if you need it to be travel size. I'm going to need Aunt Evelyn's stomach soother after today, I think. We're now moving on to Delancey Catering, which essentially it's a it's an old school hot dog truck over on, I guess that would be Delancey Street, one would think. Uh, the menu there is inspired by Arabian Coast because it's a curry flavored hot dog. Um, so they are worrying people, they're, they're generally, this is weird, I feel like there are two sensitivities to spicy food in Japan. It's either cannot handle it at all or as much as you can muster and there's no in between I often feel like but uh, so they'll always ask if anything's spicy there's always warnings here it's never enough that the word curry or um, like we've seen the sauce that black mala chili there's still no warning on it that it's going to be spicy um, so they're asking people if you want the spicy sauce on this hot dog before they put it on so it's not only a special hot dog I'm gonna lose that paper, let's do that. It's not only a special, like, hot dog, because there's this is not a normal hot dog. It's like a tan color, I would say. Uh, and so, I assume it's gonna be like a currywurst. And then uh, this spicy red sauce on top, which I have no idea what it is. We're gonna find out, though. I mean, the hot dog absolutely tastes like Indian curry. Straight up. Like, it melted in my mouth and just tasted like I was drinking a bowl of Indian curry. So the casing is real soft. It just melts in your mouth. The bun is very standard. It's just out of a, out of a bag, essentially. But nice and soft. White bread. Nothing to complain about. 
I am getting nothing from the sauce. They're warning people this is spicy. I'm getting nothing but like a light ketchup, like a tomato flavor. It just tastes like ketchup. There's a, maybe the tiniest bit of spice. I keep trying it as if I'm missing something. Very little. I wish there was a little more going on, but I'll give it a three. It's it's good. Is it great? No, like it just tastes like great. I, I appreciate, they got the three really for being interesting. Not necessarily for how much I would want one again. But yeah, three. Interesting, different, but the sauce really could have brought it to a five or six, I think, if it had been spicy with a lot of flavor, especially Indian flavor. If they put, they should just put the um, the spicy harissa sauce that they sell at the counter service. They should just put that on here. That would be the key, man. This is this would be incredible with that. This would be a, a five or a six. The food trucks in Waterfront Park are celebrating Fantasy Springs, which isn't open yet, but the event runs through June 30th, so Fantasy Springs will be open uh, and operating while this festival is going on at some point. Um, so these are, again, flavors inspired by the ports of the park. It's two separate food trucks, which wasn't really made clear, but nonetheless, there's a food truck red and a food truck blue. And they're heavily themed because we're in Disney Sea. They're, they're really gorgeous. Uh, the blue food truck has just the food item, which is the, uh, is gonna be, sorry, I scrolled up. The baked dolce, which is apple caramel, an apple treat inspired by Rapunzel. Uh, I was, for a minute, I was like, where's the, like spoon or fork. It's this weird thing that looks like the texture of a Flintstones vitamin. Um, they're real big on this biodegradable thing. Is that edible? It's not edible. No. I was like, it's just so weird. Compared to like the sustainable stuff in America does not look like this looks. Okay, so I see there's some bread and some apple. Oh, wow, it's nice and hot. Not used to hot food at a festival. Nice, fresh chunks of apple. Are there any more bread? Any more pastry? Yeah, there's some. Okay. Loads of caramel. Drizzling. Drizzling. It's the opposite of what I'm saying. It's flowing over every piece. There's loads of caramel sauce. So, despite there being loads of it, it's not overpowering. It's hot and sticky and, and just the right amount of sweet. Uh, the apple's nice and fresh and crunchy. And then all this, I think all this red and brown is, is cinnamon and sugar. I don't know what the pastry is, but it's this real soft cake. Kind of looks like, from a distance, looks like, yeah, just a yellow cake. It's got a nice crispy crust, real soft and crumbly on the inside. This is fantastic. This is a six. Six out of seven. I would absolutely get this again. On to the other food truck on the left side, the red food truck has the drinks. Again, all Fantasy Springs related. Uh, so they have four drinks. We're only doing two of them because two of them are, are labeled food and wine. The other two are not. 
Uh, the other two are labeled Dreaming of Fantasy Springs, which I've explained what that is already. Um, those are the non-alcoholic, so those come in the Fantasy Springs plastic cups. It's an iced fruit tea with berries and an iced fruit tea with peach. It is that tea uh, that we had in Teddy Roosevelt. So that answers, I mean, iced fruit tea. I don't think you call it fruit tea because you threw fruit in it. Usually that means it's a fruit-flavored tea. So I assume what we had at Teddy was a fruit tea? Uh, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. But either way, you could have that same tea uh, with berries or peach thrown in it. Um, which are going to be strawberries, by the way. Um, then, what's weird is it says, it says berries, but it's literally one type of berry for what I could see. Strawberries. But then the peach side, I see peach, but then there's something else that's not peach. It looks like melon? Maybe? I have no idea. Either way, uh, labeled for food and wine are the fruit wine. Uh, berries or peach. So let me let me look at the actual. I'm going to read you the actual menu because the menu board, even in English, had uh, a little different than what I'm reading off the website. Yeah. So for the ice fruit tea, it's that Gogo no Kocha tea uh, in those. So in these, it's a red wine with fruit, which is berry, and a white wine with fruit, which is peach. But there's definitely something that's not peach. In there. We're going to find out what it is. All right, I'm a red wine guy, so let's start with the white leaf, what I'll actually drink for last. Let's get drunk at Disney Sea because there's actually stuff to do here. This is the opposite. I don't want to get drunk at Disney Sea because it's the best theme park in the world. There's a million things I want to see and do. This is an Epcot. I don't need to forget what used to be here. You know? It's the opposite. My favorite cute little... Japanese cast member thing is that they always are like, please stir. Please stir the drink. I would assume so. You gave me a thing to stir. Although this is a spoon, actually. So this is really to get, if I want to get the fruit out, I can. Let's just, let's sip for now. Cucumber? I think it's cucumber and peach. Yeah. You know, I already don't like white wine. Cucumber and white wine. Oh, I just got instant heartburn. Not my thing. Right. Cucumber is overpowering everything. I get a little peach on the back end, but man, that cucumber is... It's like I'm sucking on a cucumber. Someone just dropped it beautiful popcorn bucket and scratch it and it breaks my heart. That hurts more than the heartburn does at this point. That a beautiful collectible popcorn bucket has a slight scratch on the bottom of it. He's very sad about it. You can see it in his face. I would just go buy another one at that point. That's how I am with those things. Alright, I'm going to cleanse my palate with iced green tea. I'm sure that works. Alright. Red wine. I'm only seeing strawberries. We can use the spoon to fish around in here, though. Oh, the blueberries. They're at the bottom. So it is berries. It's strawberries and blueberries. Is that a blueberry? Is that a grape? I mean, the rest look like blueberries. That looks like a grape. Is a grape a berry? I, that's probably the dumbest thing I've ever said in a vlog. But I, it's never registered with me. Usually when things are labeled, oh, this is mixed berry. I never think of grape. Grape, blueberry, and yeah, those are grapes. Grapes, blueberries, and strawberries. It's like cheap communion wine. <laughs> it's junk. That is junk wine. Thank God this park is good. <laughs> At Epcot, it, it, the food and drink would be bad. And on top of that, then I'd have to go to Epcot, which has nothing worth riding. This park. Oh, this park, on the other hand, Journey Center of the Earth, not to mention like 10 other things um, I'd love to ride right now. Um, all of which I'd rather do than drink these wines. Um, I'm going to give the cucumber one a one. 
I don't even know if you like white wine if you're going to be ecstatic about your white wine having an overt cucumber flavor. Like, if you want a cucumber cocktail, you get, like, a cucumber mojito, right? Like, that's, and that's, even I could drink those. Like, that works for me, and I don't even like cucumber. That's the right venue for the, for the ingredient, right? Uh, the red wine, the base red wine is bad. It's not the berries ruining it. The berries, I taste the berry, but that's not what's ruining it, the wine. The wine is just bad red wine on its own. Oh, Think of like the cheapest red wine at the liquor store. The absolute cheapest one where its only purpose is for you to forget today. Right, that's what it is. I'm dreaming of Fantasy Springs right now. Anything to get away from these cocktails. We're not done yet though, there's more. Oh boy. Our next location and probably my last for today, given how gross I feel. Doing a festival alone is, is bad, even even when there's not a ton. I mean, there's still a lot. Like, oh, this is a this is a rough day. So those two cocktails, those wine cocktails, did me in. Even the little bit of them I had, they're just so gross. I don't feel great. Um, I might do one more thing today later. There's one thing that's kind of desserty, so maybe we'll loop back around to that. But in the in the meantime, uh, I lost my place now. Uh, we're now visiting Mysterious Island, my favorite land in any Disney park in the world, since it's home to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and Journey to the Center of the Earth, and the Gyoza Dog, which I could have been eating instead of all this today, and I will never forgive this park for this. Uh, <laughs> nonetheless, uh, this is at the Restaurant Sakura Terrace. So Restaurant Sakura is a sit-down restaurant, but they have a terrace outside on the left uh, with a seating area and a service counter. Uh, this had no way. So, uh, there's a special cocktail, which is sake and peach. A cocktail where you can enjoy the flavors of peach and perilla that melt into the sake. Now I gotta look up what perilla is, other than tours of Italy. That's perillo. Is that a perilla leaf? This is not something I'm familiar with, I'll be honest. One of the major Asiatic crop species, perilla frutescens, and a few wild species in nature belonging in the mint family. It's in the mint family. Uh, Asian herb, seed, and vegetable crop. Yeah, so it's a type of mint. Could have just said that, but all right. And kids are screaming because they can't believe it's just mint. I'm joking, there's a giant water fountain, water feature that dances to music in the middle here. It's kind of cold today, so I don't know why these kids are getting soaked. It's like in the 60s today. Low 60s. It's, it's a little chilly. Anyway, I digress. The other item is the chicken roll, which has a tianmian sauce and mango. I don't know what that is either. We're learning all sorts of things today. This is what's good about a food and wine event, right? You learn stuff about food. Tianmian sauce. Also known as sweet bean sauce. Sweet flour sauce or sweet wheat paste is a thick, smooth, dark brown or black paste with either a mild, savory, or sweet flavor. It's commonly used in northern Chinese cuisine, northern Chinese cuisine, as well as Korean Chinese cuisine. Sakura is a Chinese restaurant, so that does make a lot of sense. Let's uh, let's give it a try then. I was worried about having just a fork, but that meat is coming right off the bone. Look at that. Look at it, just separated. It's so delicate. The skin is another thing, but the, the meat itself came right off the bone. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. That's too much. That's too much. I don't have a knife. You're killing me. Yeah, it's thick and sweet. Reminds me of a different Chinese sauce. I'm trying to equate it, especially the aftertaste. Like, like spare ribs, like, like the sauce that would come on American Chinese takeout spare ribs, but much thicker, much stronger flavor. 
Um, but I would say, yeah, along those lines. Uh, the chicken is good. It's real nice and tender, well cooked. Sauce is solid. Not my thing necessarily, but I'll give it a four. I'll take another bite. I'll give it another shot. The chicken happens to be very nice. The skin just does not want to break with this earth-saving fork. Can they give me an earth-saving knife with it? Yeah, I mean, it's not my sauce of preference. I like stuff with a little more kick. It's like I'm not a big barbecue sauce guy either. I like spicy barbecue sauce, but plain? Oh, that's, that's how it feels for me. Is it just, um, I need something with kick. Let's wash that down with the cocktail. I'm sure I have chicken all in my teeth, all in my braces, which, knock on wood, are coming off in a few weeks. Uh, again, a, a sake and peach cocktail. So it's going to be sake with peach and mint. Wow. I was going to put somebody on the floor. But somebody's going to be me. I mean, there's nothing wrong with sake. I've never had... Even the worst sake I've ever had, I think, is still drinkable. Um, uh, what's nice about it, even though there's a lot in there, it doesn't overwhelm the sake, right? There's a nice hint of uh, fruity flavor in there, peach. And, and the mint isn't, yeah, I guess there's a little bit of mint on the back end. Oh, I got a lot more than that sip. It probably settled at the bottom. This one actually probably needs a stir. Would I give the chicken a three? I don't even know anymore. I can't remember. It's been a long day. It's been a long week. I'm gonna give this a four too. Very drinkable. If you enjoy sake, I think you'll like it. Unlike the wines where I think whether you like wine or hate wine, you'll hate that either way. All right, we're gonna take a little break for a little bit and let's see if I can muster up the courage for one more item today, or maybe finish. We'll see how I feel. We're gonna take a little break. There is festival merchandise. Also, excuse the blaring Tower of Terror background music. Um, you're looking now at the t-shirt. I didn't buy the t-shirt because they don't make my size in t-shirts. I know, shocking, right? There is a file folder. That's right, it's just a folder clear folder that's it everything's going to look very similar then there is a there's not much there's a postcard there is a large sticker I'm sure the attendant just killed some folks it's fine there's a big sticker. And last but not least, I think this is a magnet. I can get it out. Yep. It's heavy. I think it's rubber, yeah. Big hit rubber, heavy magnet. So stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm going to give away one sticker and one postcard. I'll let you know how later. As you can tell, I have changed shirts, so it's a new day. I did not feel great after what I ate and drank yesterday. <laughs> well, no, I ended up leaving at six o'clock at night. Uh, the park was packed though, so um, it was one of the worst days I've ever seen here as far as crowds, so there wasn't much for me to do anyway. Came a little earlier today, got an earlier start. Rope dropped Hudson River Harvest, which uh, ended up not having a wait, which yesterday was like a 30 minute wait. Also got the mobile order for New York Deli, which I could not get yesterday. It's still in several hours, but I got it. Um, so we will be able to finish today. The only outlier is uh, Gondolier Snacks, which has one drink we have to get that opens at noon. So we'll go over there then. But um, I think I can say I've done it all after uh, this dish in particular, because um, it's, I, I can't believe this is a thing. And I assure you, it's not a cultural difference. I think even the local guests are, are kind of raising their eyebrows at this. So uh, Hudson River Harvest, which is over by the Columbia, is celebrating the Lost River Delta, which is the Central South America area. Oh, good, they're going to blast music over me now. Cool. The fountains are going to dance to this music behind me. 
ignore that, please. Let's keep going. Um, so they have a sparkling cocktail, which is pisco and cranberry, but I want to talk about the Tongari corn. They have a thing called Tongari corn here. Uh, the company that makes it is a sponsor of Tokyo Disney Resort. So you'll find Tongari corn in places. Hungry Bear Restaurant at Disneyland actually sells it for some reason. I don't know if you want that in your curry, but for whatever reason, they have it. Um, so they're bugles. We have them in America. They're called bugles, right? I want to pick one up, even though I'm supposed to eat this with a spoon. They're straight up bugles. So these are Tangari corn and avocado nachos. It is a a paper, I don't even know what they're called, but a paper wrapper where they just threw the Tangari corn in, some unmelted cheese, and a little bit of avocado cream. And they're Tangari corn and avocado nachos. And they're 800 yen, which I saw some of the locals tweeting not so positively about yesterday. But I have my spoon, you're supposed to eat it with a spoon, because it would be weird to, weird to eat, eat Tangari corn with your hand, I guess. Even though it's, you know, it's like a bag of chips, basically. All right. <laughs> I just have a glob of avocado. Let me get another Tangari corn in there. This is something like a single bachelor with what are good on a Friday night. He's like, I got a bag of bugles, I have some cheese and some avocado cream. And just throw it in a bowl and it's good enough for, you know, lonely Friday movie night, right? As a as a food and wine festival item, this might be the silliest and dumbest thing I've ever seen. Also you can't use a spoon to eat bugles. This is nonsense. As far as taste, the avocado cream is fresh. It tastes good. Um, the cheese is not melted. It, it's there. You taste that cheddar mixing in. Um, and they're just bugles. So, I mean, taste-wise, they're, they're perfectly fine. But as far as a concept for a food and wine festival, this is... I'm giving this a zero. This is a zero out of seven because they're bugles. Like, this is nonsense. But you know what I have to do? I can't let this opportunity pass by. Although my fingers are a lot bigger than they used to be. I think that's the only finger I can get. I think that's it. All my other fingers grew too much as I became an adult. That should be... That should really be the thumbnail for this, is me... Me with bugle fingers. Right? Shouldn't that? That should be it. That is the silliest dish in food and wine, Disney Food and Wine Festival history. I mean, at least put a smile on my face. It's worth the money just for this comedic moment, honestly. And to say I had bugles at a festival, I'm on, I'm on board with that. Just for that. All right. Now there's the cocktail. I got to try to move this. The wind is heavy enough that the bugle bag will blow away. Yeah, the boogie woogie bugle bag of Disney Sea. It was the boogie woogie bugle bag of Disney Sea. That's <laughs> cracked myself up. I'm glad. I'm glad someone finds me funny, and of course it's me. Um, Pisco and cranberry cocktail. So I, I knew this sounded familiar. I'm not super, uh, I'm familiar enough to have heard it, but not, I don't know that I've ever had Pisco in anything, but it is a colorless or yellowish to amber colored spirit produced in winemaking regions of Peru and Chile, um, which makes sense because we're in Lost River Delta, right? That's where roughly that would be if Lost River Delta was a real place. Um, so it's gonna be that spirit and, uh, and cranberry, right? Did I read that right? Let's go back. Yeah, Pisco and Cranberry. I do love cranberry cocktails, so I think I might love this. I'm going to give this a little stir. I don't know what's on top. Hopefully it's not more bugles. Boogie woogie bugle bag of Disney Sea. That's going to be stuck in my head all day now. I just dropped something. Oh, there's ice. 
Oh, that's my favorite cocktail I've had here. Um, it's, it's sweet and syrupy for sure. It's also light and refreshing. I love the cran, again, I love a good cranberry cocktail. I'm trying to think of how to, it, it kind of almost tastes a little bit like a, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a cranberry margarita. But it also has, um, it's, I think it's carbonated. No, it's not. You would ask, why is that so hard to tell? I'm sipping through ice, so it is a little hard to tell. Yeah, no, it's not carbonated. It's got that sweetness of like a sparkling cocktail, which is why I was thinking that for a second. Yeah, seven. That's a seven out of seven. Light, refreshing, easy to drink. Definitely taste the alcohol, it's there. Get a little burn on the back end. Um, nice cranberry forward flavor. Seven out of seven. At least they, they made up for the Tongari corn, the boogie woogie bugle bag of Disney Sea. Our Tokyo Disney Sea food and wine journey has now brought us outside of American Waterfront. This is the only location uh, taking part outside of American Waterfront. We're in Mediterranean Harbor the entrance area of the park at Gondolier Snacks, uh, where they have the, uh, this is gonna be the Amaretto Latte Cocktail. So, and, I mean, it's an Amaretto Latte Cocktail, right? What's more to know? There's a little cookies on top. She said to give this a stir, let's do it. I should probably have the little cookie off the top. I'm in bad Italian, I forget what those are called. But they're fantastic. I miss those. Stella Doro does a, uh, one of those. And I, man, I used to devour those things. They do not have Stella Doro. And I don't think they have them in the Florida. I don't even get them. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm right okay, that looks nice and mixed now. Oh, my goodness. It's delightful. I mean, it's... It's basic, right? It's, it's something you can get many, many places in the world. Um, it's a latte with amaretto. The topping adds a nice creaminess to it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a creamy, it's a creamy alcoholic latte. I don't know what, I mean, because it's, I would give it a seven, but because it is such a normal, offering something you find many many places i'm gonna give it a six but still still one of the one of the one of the better or one of the best based on how little luck we've had well we've reached the final destination this is our uh, last stop at the tokyo disney sea food and wine festival the first year hopefully we went on a strong note because it hasn't been strong to this point uh New York Deli is an actual counter service location with an interior, and it's a gorgeous interior. Um, I don't recommend eating in New York Deli typically, but you should come look inside if you're in the park. Um, it's this great story. The deli um, became so successful that they bought the spaces next door. So there, there's a, uh, a tavern that was converted, all in backstory, and, and uh, I think a place where the performers for the Broadway theater live, etc. Really cool interior, and then the deli, the deli seating area where you could actually sit with a case full of meat is, uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, their menu is inspired by Mermaid Lagoon, which of course the Little Mermaid Land, uh, mostly geared towards children here in the park. Um, the items here, we have a sparkling cocktail, which is rum and pineapple, sounds good, and then scallops with mashed potatoes and shrimp chips. Shrimp chips are shaped like shells. That's, I'm glad they told me that because I wouldn't have. I, I guess that looks like a shell. I don't know. This one sure as hell doesn't. They just look like shrimp chips.
for shrimp chips, those are probably the most subtle I've ever had. Um, which is probably, most people will like that better. I think usually there's a real overt fishiness to the ones I've had, but it's a good, nice and airy and salty. And, all right, well, let's try this <sighs> scallop. There's scallops in this mashed potato, apparently. Let's get in there. Oh my God. It's stringy. I don't want to wear it. Unexpectedly, it's one of the better things I've had. Um, it could have been a little warmer. I didn't shoot it for very long. Maybe it's been here for two minutes. Um, so it's not holding heat particularly well. Scallops are not super fishy. They have good flavor to them. They're well cooked. Mashed potatoes have a good consistency. I thought they were going to be a little too watery. They're not. It's almost as if you threw a uh, New England chowder. Obviously, it's not clam. It's, it's uh, you know, uh, scallops. But um, it has like a New England clam chowder and mashed potato vibe going for it. For the price, if you're a seafood person, I, I'd give it a shot. And say five, five out of seven. I'll be, I'll be fair. All right, time for the cocktail again. It's rum and rum and pineapple. A uh, blue pina colada style cocktail inspired by the blue sea. Thanks, I didn't know what color the sea was. We're gonna give this a stir like every other Disney Sea cocktail. No one instructed me to this time. Surprise! Usually the cast members are adamant about giving the instruction that I stir the drink. I don't know what these little start are they are they marshmallows? Is it like Lucky Charms? Let's, let's I need to find out first. I can't wait. Yet. They kind of taste like the consistency of a crouton. Um, they have thoroughly soaked up the alcohol. They just they just taste like rum. They taste like rum breadcrumbs. It's not a bad thing, but rum crumbs. That one's definitely carbonated. There's no doubt there. Right? Or am I going crazy? I might be losing it. Yeah. Yeah, it is. You know, I feel like an idiot, but usually if something's carbonated, you can see it more clearly. Uh, but if you look real close, you can see it's bubbling a little bit. Um, that or I've completely lost my mind, both of which are possible at this point. Um, this is perfectly fine. It's drinkable. I like that it's not syrupy sweet. Again, I'm so used to that with the other Disney Parks Festival cocktails. A couple of these have been real easy to drink. Not overly sweet. It's pineapple forward for sure. Um, I would say it's probably not very heavy on the rum. There's definitely rum in it, I taste it, but it's not strong. And I gave it a good stir. So, yeah, that's that. I'm gonna give that, let's give that a five too. It's solid. Uh, actually, if I gave the, I like that dish. I'm gonna give the four, four for the, for the cocktail. So now that we finished up, I wanna real quick just go over, usually we do a seven best, seven worst. There's not, not that much to begin with, so we're not gonna do that. Um, just a quick recap, and I wanna go back over a couple things that as I ate them, uh, as I continued to eat or drink those items, I had some thoughts or I came upon something different. Um, you know, real quick, lo the, the Hudson River Harvest had the lo Lost River Delta menu. We tried that this morning. Um, there was a no on the uh, Tongari corn and avocado nachos, the bugle nachos. Remember those guys? Not that probably all of eight minutes ago for you. Um, and then the sparkling cocktail we did enjoy. Uh, for the American Waterfront, that was Dockside Diner. That's in the other full-size counter service location. Um, like the Coke cocktail, I'm still not sure if that was chocolate on top of that or crushed nuts. It was so finely crushed, it's hard to tell. And there was sort of a desserty profile from um, the Coke and cherry brandy flavor of the drink. So I still don't know. It might have been crushed nut. 
uh, I can't read Japanese or um, kanji. I don't think it said it on the board anyway, so I tried Google Translate, didn't pick up anything. Stay away from that fried chicken leg and the assorted snacks, if you're vegetarian, it's nice to have the option, but otherwise I don't think anybody needs it. There are beers and wines, and generic beers and wines available, like the they have the Brooklyn Lager from Kieran at uh, that location. I didn't review any of that. You can certainly go on the internet and find thoughts on Kieran. I like Kieran beers. They're generally all very drinkable. Um, but do your homework online before you try those. I wasn't going to... I'm not the biggest beer drinker, so I may not be the best judge of character on those anyway. The food trucks in Waterfront Park, we had uh, red and blue. One had the drinks, one had the food. Uh, we tried the, uh, the, the wines, right? We tried the uh, fruit wine with berries. There was a red wine with berries and a white wine with peach. I didn't really like either of those at all. Uh, but that baked dolce is probably, the apple caramel dessert, probably my favorite thing overall at the entire festival, I would say. Um, I don't need to recap New York Deli, we just did that. Next up was Gondolier Snacks, that's the one location uh, that's in Mediterranean Harbor. Uh, we like that Marta Latte cocktail, I'd absolutely recommend it. Uh, for Mysterious Island, that was the restaurant Socorro, the terrace outside of uh, that location. Uh, they had that other chicken option that was the uh, chicken roll uh, with the tian mian sauce and mango, that was fine. I don't recommend, but it, it was edible. Uh, the cocktail was sake and peach, which if you like sake, I think will do the trick for sure. Uh, real quick, the Arabian Coast item was at Delancey Catering. That's the hot dog truck. That was the curry hot dog. I'd skip it. I, I wish it had more going on. Uh, for the Liberty Landing Diner, they had um, the candy sweet potato sundae. I want to talk about this again because the more I ate, the more I discovered. And I've been trying to, I, I spent five minutes trying to decipher everything going on in that Sunday. Um, so the daifuku, the, that strawberry mochi, I found an actual piece of it at the bottom. So at the very bottom, buried under everything, there it was. So the strawberry flavor was likely not coming from anything else but that. I still don't really know what the jelly in there was. It might have been sweet potato flavored it's it's hard to tell and none of the descriptions say anything um but i think it's a solid option but i wanted to clarify that that's where the strawberry flavor it's the only thing i think the strawberry flavor was coming from but it, it could have been strawberry jelly in there too i can't identify everything in that sunday <laughs> there was so much going on and then the rice krispies and it's, it was it was wild i i think it's worth a try i would give it a shot if you want to try something weird and interesting I'd say get it. And that sparkling wine was solid, too. Uh, and then uh, Barnacle Bills, which was the Mediterranean Harbor menu. Um, that beer cocktail was real solid. And then, uh, surprisingly, that polpetti and bone sausage, the bo Italian bone sausage dish, wasn't awful. It was mediocre at best, but not awful. And then for Teddy Roosevelt, um, if you go to the sit-down side, the actual lounge, um, I, I, that was my second favorite thing was, was that drink. Uh, and then um, go around the corner if you want to get the wine glass uh, with the sparkling wine, which I highly recommend for a souvenir. It's very cute. And it was a, it was a good, easy drink to, to uh, imbibe on. So overall thoughts on Disney Seafood and Wine. A lot of room for improvement. Not an incredibly strong event when there's like three things I would have again. Um, and I don't think it's a cultural difference. Again, like I like to double check um, with the local audience here. Again, I was not born and raised in Japan, so I understand, you know, um, taste is different. Um, but all the locals I've seen on Twitter and everyone I've spoken to really had the same feelings for sure. So keep that in mind. It's not um, the strongest Disney food festival I've been to. It, it might by default, in this case, might be the worst one I've been to. Um, but hopefully they'll uh, try a little harder. If it does come back next year, I hope they try a little harder and um, come up with some, some better options than bugle nachos. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more. Please check out my Tokyo Vlogs. That's going to be a continuing series throughout the summer, uh, into the summer and throughout. 
uh, where I'm going to try to teach you everything I possibly can about the Tokyo Disney Resort. It should be a fun series. Um, I thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope some of you are coming and, and this is helpful in some way. And uh, we'll see you real soon.